Hello. Remember when I used to film in this bathroom closet all the time? Probably not. That was back when I had like five videos. I'm filming in here today because I can't film in the regular place because this is more of a vloggy video instead of a talky video, which I think is also a vlog, but this is more of a goey aroundy vloggy thing. And you can't film those in the same place as you film other videos. It's an unspoken YouTube vlog. Also, I don't know if I'm in focus or if the sound is good because it's really echoey in here. And also, you're literally all the way on the other side of the room because I couldn't find the regular lens, so I'm filming with the super zoom lens today. Seriously, look how many steps away you are. You're like, you're, you're, uh, you're so far. Anyway, this is a film vlog journal diary thing for reading The Maze Runner. This is the book that my book club picked out this month, and I kind of wanted to do book talks for each book that my book club reads, but I don't think I have time for that. Plus, I don't really like doing book talks that much because they're kind of boring to edit and to plan. So I'm doing this instead because I think it will be more fun to film and more fun to edit. Book talks are not fun to edit. It. So the Maze Runner. Right now I'm on chapter 8 because I didn't originally plan to film this, so I didn't film a pre what I think I'm going to think about it thing, but luckily my last video I talked about it. This book just does not sound like my taste at all, and so I'm not expecting to get all the way through it. I'm probably going to give it 50 pages, probably will DNF it there, and probably will just read the full synopsis on Wikipedia if that's on there. I'm not a big fan of a violent book, so this is definitely something I don't want. It's shiny though. I like how shiny this cover is. So far, I'm not hating it as much as I thought I would, which is good, I guess. I'm still not loving it, but I don't hate it. Also, obviously, this video is going to have Maze Runner spoilers in it, so you better click off if you don't want that. Bye. So I finished chapter 7. I'm actually on page 49, and in that little clip I just showed you, I said I was probably going to give it till page 50, and then end up DNFing it and just reading the synopsis online. But I think I'm going to give it more, because I'm not loving it. But right now, the complaints that I have with it are kind of grasping at straws or strings, whatever the term is, because I also see the reason for it. Like, the main thing is the annoying fake slang words. Shank, clunk, what is the other one? Something that sounds very much like shank and clunk. It's like the same three words, and there's not a single line of dialogue where they don't use one of those words and it's annoying. And all three of them sound suspiciously like the F word and the S word combined. Which is almost as annoying, if not more annoying, than actually just swearing. But the roughish sounding language fits with the rough situation, and the lack of more slang words kind of helps make it feel like they're closed off from society. So I see what he's doing with it, even if it's a little annoying. Also, I'm kind of enjoying the mystery aspect. Still, again, I don't love it yet. But I wasn't expecting the mystery aspect. I should have been, but I wasn't. And it's intriguing. It's intriguing enough to be entertaining. Ish. But we'll see what my opinions are on it as we go. Hi again, I got a good ways into it. So something I forgot to mention in the last clip is the violence that I know is coming. According to Common Sense Media, this book got a 4 out of 5 in the violence thing. And a lot of violence is not something I usually put up with in books unless I'm really enjoying the rest of the story. At the moment, I'm feeling pretty average about it, so we'll see what happens when the extreme violence get here. So far, the violent parts don't seem that violent to me, or maybe that's just because I'm kind of skimming over them. So I don't know if that's the extreme violent parts, or if it's going to get worse. So something I realized is that the book club is actually meeting to discuss this book this Thursday, and so if I'm going to finish it on time, I need to read 10 chapters a day, which is a lot. Luckily, this book has pretty decently short chapters most of the time, and it's a fast-paced book, and I've been skimming 
working along some parts of it. I reached that goal yesterday. I was on chapter 9 and I read to chapter 23, which is a lot. That was a big chunk that I got behind me. But I have several more big chunks that I need to get behind me before the next five days. Plus, I would like at least one full 24-hour period to let everything sink in because I don't really want it fresh on my mind. I'm sure some people would, but I would like to have time for my opinions to settle and make sure that I know how I want to word my opinions and things like that. So I need to read a little bit more than 10 chapters a day if I want that. So far, that goal's going pretty well. What's happening in the book right now, they just came back for surviving the night in the maze. Which, for some reason, that feels a little anticlimactic to me once they came back. Like, people just didn't seem that impressed with them. Like, they did go through the row of people gawking at them, but I still am not really feeling like anyone's that impressed by what they did. I'm not sure how I feel about Ben's execution, banishment, whatever that was. When they brought out the little collar thing, my mind immediately went to nooses, and I was like, I don't know where this is going, but I don't really like it. I'm not really sure if I feel like that was justified or not. I feel like, especially since he was sick and he seemed so repentant when they actually were doing it, that maybe they should have had a little bit of forgiveness. But then again, you don't know if he's faking it, and you don't know if he's just pretending or if he's actually planning on doing something bad. My opinion on that has not settled yet. Whoever these creators are, I don't know why they wrote the word wicked on their little things. I don't think evil people really express their evilness that much. They try to come across as decent and nice, like they're trying to help, not literally pick wicked as their brand name that they put on everything. So it's weird. I think I have to go now, so yeah. The lighting's probably very bad because it's stormy out, but I have to film this right now anyways. Just put up with it. So I finished book. Sorry I didn't post more updates. I meant to do it once I hit chapter 30, but then I didn't. And then I didn't have any other opportunities to because today is actually the day that the book club is meeting to discuss this. And I was only halfway through it. So I had to get the audiobook and basically listen to three hours of it straight while we straightened up the house. So that worked pretty well. So there's a lot of things that happened. Wicked. I'm not sure if I trust these people yet. On one hand, we don't really have any other options for good guys to be on the side of because apparently those rescuers are part of Wicked too, according to the epilogue. But on the other hand, they're murderers and evil-ish. And their name is literally Wicked. But on the other hand, the girl, I've already forgotten her name, Tavara Tarnara, Tiptara, Sylvia, the Dora. She apparently thought Wicked was good at first because she wrote it on her arm, which I feel like she forgot that too soon. Forgot that she wrote that and considered that important. Like the scene with the rescuers was really weird. You're in this one place with this one people thing and then a bunch of guys with guns comes in, murders everyone, and then they just trust them. They just, they do, because why not? Which seems kind of stupid, but I guess they don't really have any other options. Chuck died. I don't know how I feel about that. Actually, I do. I thought it was stupid and pointless. I knew he was going to die because I heard a friend mention he was going to die a long time ago. But I was hoping for, like, a reasonable explanation as to why Gally randomly pulled out a knife and threw it at him. That scene didn't get explained at all. I think the last few chapters were my least favorite part of the book. It just seemed weird. I feel like we're moving into a pretty typical plot idea. I don't know. So while reading this book, I was thinking that after finishing it, I might want to read the next one, but I don't think I really want to or care to. Like, maybe, maybe if I find like a 99 cent copy, I'll pick it up and have it on my shelf at least, but I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be in the mood to read it. I can tell a lot more people are going to die and a lot more violence is going to happen, and I feel like the only thing that was making me want to read the rest of the series was the mystery aspect, but I feel like 
all the questions that I really cared about got answered at the end. What the flair was, what the maze was, who the creators were, what the point of it all was. I still have other questions. For instance, where was this maze? It's literally miles long. So where did the creators keep it? What is the point of getting all these boys to go through all of this? How is Thunder? What's the point of having a girl in their group? One singular girl. But I feel like we got all the foundational questions answered. That feels like enough for me to never learn the answers to some other questions. I feel like this book has a few plot holes in it. Like the whole time since Thomas proved that you could climb up the vines, I'm wondering why no one ever tried climbing up to the very top of the walls and then just shimmying their way to the edges and climbing back down. That's what I would have thought to do. There's way too much death in this book for my taste. Like, I just, I just don't care for death in books. I was really kind of hoping the girl was going to end up being Thomas's sister, and I'm kind of still hoping that, but I know that's a false hope. I know that they're going to end up being like boyfriend and girlfriend, and I kind of don't like that. I think it would make much more sense for them to end up being brother and sister. That would make the telepathy thing make more sense. Like the lovey-ish scenes that we've seen so far are kind of stupid. I don't think this book does emotion very well. I feel like like whenever he was trying to portray people having emotions, it was a little bit overdone or cheesy. I just didn't think that aspect was done very well. Overall, I don't think I'm gonna continue the series. I might read like the full synopsises of them just to see what happens, but I just don't think I care enough to go through two, three more books. I'm confused about what Galley is, or why. I don't- that scene, I just don't know anything about it. Albie's death seemed really stupid. It just- it did. Overall, my opinions are this gets a 6 out of 10 stars for quality and 4 out of 10 stars for personal enjoyment, which I think lands at a solid average 5 stars, which in a 5 star rating would be 3 stars, I guess. Maybe 2 and a half stars. I might give it 2 and a half stars. We'll see. We'll see what mood I'm in when I rate it. It did have good aspects. It entertained me. I enjoyed the mystery. History, but ending it, I just feel so underwhelmed by it. I don't quite get the hype for this one. I'm not going to change into wolf form or get Thomas out for the end of this because I just don't feel like it doesn't feel right for this video. Yeah? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I want anything. So that's the end of the video. Bye.